implies interracial dating, self hatred. Let's see. Well, let me ask you this question, right? To, just to go back to the dating outside your race. Um, you once said that dating interracially is a form of self hatred. Absolutely. Um, why do you Why do you believe that? Absolutely. Because why do you want to stare in the face of a member of the people who have committed the greatest human atrocities against your people? These are the people. Is that only are. specifically to white people, or you, you, do you mean if they date an Asian? Come on, man. A form of self hatred. Some people will see it as a sign of conquering something that they couldn't have. So I guess that's how you look at it, but me personally, I couldn't I wouldn't want a baby in a racially because I want my baby to, to look like me and have my features, but it's understandable if somebody who's dark skinned and get with a light skinned person just to have a lighter baby or somebody with so called nappy hair get with somebody with good hair to have a good hair baby. That would be like if I was teased by a certain attribute, a certain thing and I want to help my kids any way I can in life. Why not have them with somebody with the opposite traits of me to give my kids those traits so they don't have to go what I went through in life? You know, Indian woman, is that still the same? Well, I got two answers. If we if we dealing with white people, right. why would you want one of them after what they've done to us and continue to do? Because you're... Now, this whole us thing and this grouping thing together with black people, it has got to stop. All our interactions with white people are not the same. All our interactions with black and other people of other races aren't the same. Some people have never been treated bad by white people. Some people have never been called the N-word by white people. And some people have no relatives who were hung, beat, killed, just mistreated in all kinds of ways by white people. Everybody's view of this is not the same. My girlfriend's still a racist. She still doesn't value black life. You understand that white man Serena Williams is married to. He don't value black life. Does he value her life though? Does he value their kids' life? He doesn't have to care about the whole black race to want to be with Serena Williams and actually have love and feelings for her. Like that makes no sense at all. Every black person don't have compassion, understanding, and respect for every black person. So like, it's human nature. What's the point? You understand that white woman that took a billion dollars from Tyler, uh, not Ty Tiger Woods. She don't value black life, right? <laughs> I get to give you countless examples of people I've met in therapy who recall that. The woman who's with Tiger Woods might not value black life, but I doubt Tiger Woods care about black people like that. And if he got the woman of his dreams to have the fun and have kids with, and the ultimate goal with a woman to me is to have kids. So if he was able to do that with her. I'm pretty sure, like, all the other bullshit that's coming with the game, he don't care about it. He's still out there with their kids together and teaching the, the young little Tiger Woods golf and all that and having the time of his life. All the other stuff is just, it will come with the game. Like, shit, you can't get no closer than that. Worry about white husbands and white wives. You understand me? White people who have sex with you, didn't the slave master sleep with our mothers and grandmothers? So just because they land in the bed with you, what makes you think that they shed that they their racism? They don't. White people are... The slave master slept with our mothers and grandmothers, which could be true, but didn't, uh, you know, the white people slept with the black men too and forced them to do things that they didn't want to do? Let's not make it seem like it's just the man set back while the women was getting mistreated. Everybody was getting mistreated. We was all so-called slaves. So all white people are racist. There's no exception. They might not all be bigots, but they're all racist. They all want their people. The fact that he said every white person is a racist is actually kind of a good thing. The term racist, racist and racism has been twisted to mean like any kind of thing you point out in a particular race that's not really known for other races to be doing the same thing is wrong to point that out, but it's not true. Everybody should want to be racist or in terms selective to their people or people who look like them, people who, who, who could be their family members and stuff like that. Every race should aspire to be just like that. To dominate unfairly the resources, the opportunities, and the privileges of this society. What Every about, white person. What about the people that just say love is love, right? Who believes love is love? I mean, that's most people's answer. Most, that might be most. 
as a wise man once said, the definition of love is loyalty and sacrifice. If you're looking for more than that out of love, like you're thinking about a fairy tale, and this is real life, fairy tales were made in the image of being perfect, but we all know in life, nothing is perfect. Black people, love, love ain't love for most white folks. White folks, everything white people do has a political purpose. Mm. Everything white people do has a political purpose. Ain't no love is love of white w people. Would be, we be considered racist? So that would mean me talking to my white neighbor about how the grass look or how the flowers look that has a political purpose, political agenda. Like, let's, let's be clear here. The things that white people are doing, it got them in the spot that they are in now. So I think we should be aspiring to be more like what they did so we could actually get some sense of power and, you know, just leadership abilities for ourselves. We only date within our race? No, that's what you call race loyalty. And you can, racism is a group system yeah. of exploitation, discrimination, oppression, bias, mm -hmm. where one group seeks to deny all members of another group their fair share of resources. One group denying all members of a group of their fair share. Like, his whole point is null and void just by his definition of racism. Every black person is not poor. Every black person is not struggling. Every black person don't put not put is not put in the box so they have no opportunities to, to advance in life. Is it harder for black people than it is for white people? Yes, of course. I know that shit. It's common sense, but is it impossible to make things happen? Do you have to work at it? Yeah, but you could get anything you want in life. And the fact that he said holding down the whole race of people like that's impossible so by his definition shit really no white person is a racist by his definition to the teacher privilege you know why you can't be a racist you don't own a damn thing white people need in order to live <laughs> white people need you for nothing with their podcast that they're running what if some young white engineer producer director or any kind of tech guy wants a job with them and by the sense of him just being white, they don't offer him a job or don't want to qualify him for the job. What if they had girls on the couch and they paid the girls to come on the show, but they said, we don't want no white chicks to come on the show. If they came on the show and got paid, that would be a benefit to them. If the guy was able to get the job behind the scenes, that would be a benefit for them. So actually, we do have control with things like that, but I, I don't know. Let's hear what he's saying so he can explain more what's going on in his brain. He say a lot of stuff, he talk fast, but when you really stop and think about things people are saying, you can find a lot of holes in it when they just ramble us. But you need them. Mm -hmm. Who schools our who schools our kids go to? Theirs. True. Our money in whose banks? Theirs. Who's building the houses we need to rent and buy? Them. Who's shipping our stuff around the world that we need to order to live? Them. You follow me? Mm -hmm. They don't need us for shit. We need them for everything. We are as dependent on white people today as we were when slavery ended 157 years ago. Mm. So, Imagine somebody saying you as dependent on white people now in the present time that you were during slavery when you was working for free. Like the slavery these days is the position of somebody who's in prison. That's the position of a slave, modern day slavery. And actually, they said after slavery ended, that's when the incarceration of black men skyrocketed to the point to they they wanted slavery. Like, yeah, okay, we writing in the books that slavery is is outlawed, is banned, and all that. But it's always loopholes of things, and we gonna work our way around it. So let's put these people in jail for weed charges, all kind of little small BS things. Maybe they get a couple small charges and end up with big time. And we'll get them in jail working for free or basically free for pennies on a dollar. Out here being free and able to work a job and make a hundred K a year, that's nowhere close to slavery. I don't care what he says. I opinion. Mm -hmm. If you talk to an integrationist, if you talk to an integrationist and say, how far have we come since slavery? Well, we come very far. We got a black president. Now we got a black vice president. We got a black Supreme Court justice. We got about 10 black billionaires. We got about 100 black millionaires. You should change them. 
Because they're definitely... How many black millionaires or billionaires did we have during the time of slavery? Like, come on, man. Nonsense, he's saying. The progress is based exclusively on superficial assets. Are you following me? Mm -hmm. Now, that's the integrationist. Now you come to me, the nationalist, the pan-African nationalist. How much progress have we made since slavery? Zero. But doctor, why can you say that? Black people got master degrees, doctor degrees, mm -hmm. houses in white neighborhoods. We own our own businesses. We got millionaires. We got tech companies. Here's my question. In life... Aside from being just a good person, a good-hearted person to look out for people and not being dirty, like, what do you expect out of life? Life is made to want to get out there and have a purpose and to do something and hopefully be able to monetize that and live a good life off of that, like, what you do in life. Like, so, like, all this talk about, like, money don't mean nothing. Like, shit, you got regular black people donating to you for your school. But if they didn't have them jobs for them white people, how would they donate money to your school? You're not telling them to quit their jobs and let's become farmers and sustain our own thing. To, like, come on, man. It sounds good, but he's not really an in-depth speaker or really just saying anything profound. To what extent are we now in a better position to protect and dictate the lives of our children mm -hmm. today? than we was when slavery ended. Let me ask it another way. When slavery ended, we own one half of 1% of all the wealth in America. That's how much we own now. That's it. One half what? of 1% okay. of all the wealth in America. Mm -hmm. What the fuck has changed? Where did he get that stat from? First off, that's what I want to say. What, what proof he didn't cite anything when he said that he just kind of spewed it out of his mouth. No backing. But then again, the funny thing is I hear a lot of black people when they talk against white people and they always come with stats. And without even looking it up, I could tell nine times out of nine times out of nine, 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 nine times out of ten, those stats came from a white source, particularly probably some Ivy League college. But they always citing white people sources, but then again, trying to talk against white people like, come on, man. You're not self-sufficient on your own. You're just talking. You're making an impossible dream just always in front of people. Like, it's, it's something that can't be reached, what he's talking about. No. Nothing at all but the appearance of things. Right. The only thing they did when they ended slavery is change the way it looked. They traded it as slavery. Mm -hmm. Before the 13th Amendment, we were owned by individuals. We was the property of individual slaveholders. After the 13th Amendment, we became property of the government itself. We are slaves of the state. Mm. So, <coughs> still not free. Let me ask you a question. Because. Enough. You know? Worst come to worst. Every citizen in America is a property of the United States of America, not just black people, white people, Chinese people, every group of people, every person on American soil is a property of America. Basically the same with every country. Because if you walk out here right now uh -huh. and a police officer pulls you over uh -huh. and takes your life, God forbid, unjustifiably, mm -hmm. how was that any better than you being on the plantation picking cotton and the overseer just decided to get off his horse and blow your damn brains out? 157 years apart, was there any difference in the power dynamic? No, no. Nothing at all. Makes where no sense what he's exactly saying. Exactly where we were. No way power. Power. Power is the measuring stick, y'all. Not education, not income, not billionaires and millionaires, how many black people on TV, Obamas and Kamalas. That's irrelevant. Mm. How much power do we have no. to force white people to leave us the hell alone? And do we have any more now? than we had in 1865. Getting loud and acting like a preacher with that bombast and like trying to sound smart, that don't make you right. Like just really listen to what he's saying. We're not free. We're just as free as we were when we were slaves. Come on, man. Do I really even have to break this down, what he's saying? Moving. Wait, hold on. Let me ask a question real quick. Please. A lot of people say that Obama got in office and he did nothing for black people. Do you think he had the power to do anything when he was president? 
I want to ask a question. Obama didn't do nothing for black people. He did a whole bunch of stuff for gay people, which uh, is true. He could have did a lot more. He could have attempted to do more. It ain't the fact that he didn't do a lot or didn't do anything. He didn't attempt to do nothing. Even though I hear that the uh, laws that getting a lot of people out of jails who was kind of caught up with just small charges that built up from like the 90s and stuff like that, who's getting those 20 and 30 years, it was his law that he initiated when he on his way out and Trump did uh, sign it in, but Obama did bring that to the table, but he could have did a lot more. He could, he got executive order and, and uh, just ways to get things done when the president just want to just push stuff through that he's really, really, really focused on. They got a lot more power than they say. And he didn't exercise none of those power. He didn't th throw things to uh, out there for votes and they got shut down. So, you know, you can't fault somebody for helping or attempting to help but getting shut down. But you can't fault somebody for trying, not even trying to help at all. Question. Uh, do I think he had the power to Yes and no. Major changes, mm -hmm. he didn't have the power. Right. Minor changes, he did. Mm -hmm. For example, Barack Obama could have got us more black teachers. Barack Obama could have did something about the special education exploitation of our children. Mm -hmm. He could have done something. Do I feel like black teachers would help? Yeah, just not even really from a teaching standpoint, but just from the standpoint of when you see somebody who look like you being successful or being an overseer or a, or some kind of person of power over you in a good way to help teach you and help, you know, help develop you as a human. Yeah, that's, it's a different look versus seeing every teacher, no matter what, white and just thinking that, damn, only time I see these white people because I stay in the hood is when I'm at school and they're they only a position of power or just a police. A position of power is just, if I grow up, I'm going to think white people are always in position of power. Versus seeing black teachers and learning from people like that. Might not have a father at home. Might have a trash mother at home. But you go to school and you got black teachers and, you know, and they don't care about you more than a white teacher would. Black men and black women and, and people to look up to. Yeah, it would help. The suspensions and expulsions, he could have fought for better schools mm -hmm. and more black educators. Because everybody agrees that the schools are a problem. Mm -hmm. you know, everybody agrees yeah, that it's yeah. Obama didn't do nothing about that. You follow me? He could have done something about black homelessness. He didn't. Mm -hmm. Now, for the black middle class, he threw them a couple bones and allowed them to buy a house and that kind of shit if you consider that progress, right? Right. But overall, did he systemically change anything for black people? Not at all. Did he systemically change anything for gay people? Hell yeah. 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 Hell yeah. But don't you think it's easy? I wonder why he did it. Come on, man. We know. For one to do that because of the power that they put. And no, Michelle Obama is not a man. <laughs> white people crazy with that one. Because of, I mean, there's white people, Asian people that in that community. Okay, possibly, but here's my question for you. Um, let's 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 say Obama had no power to change nothing. Let's right. just say that. Mm -hmm. Then why would you vote for him for your president? I was I was ignorant. Right. A lot of people especially black people will vote for Obama just because he's black. Just to see him up there, like a black man as president. And I would too, just to like, I don't really feel like none of them really going to change their life, especially of a middle class person or nothing like that, just with the snap of their fingers. And nor do they want to do that. The middle class are the ones who really pay for a lot of things for the country. We, su we support the country. So I feel like just my child and having kids, I would want my kids and other young black people to see a black president just so they know that that's a pinnacle they can reach to. Even if it's not the presidency doing anything and being in a position of power or leadership and being able to control and run things over other people and just being a all around presentable person. How that whole system work. When, yeah. I, when I first voted, I was I just turned eighteen. You know what I mean, so when as as I'm learning more, I realize that it goes through a vote, and you need certain seats, people right. in these seats, right, to push bills through. He didn't have that. Even Biden now, where, where we voted in these seats, 
He's still not doing nothing for black people. But you know what the difference is? Uh-huh. Presidents have executive privilege. Barack Obama could have signed executive orders. Man, everybody should know that about politics. Like, presidents do have the power to sign executive orders to just force things through and just, you know, he didn't do it for black people. Mm-hmm. To do things for black people that he did not do. Remember, Biden gave the agents an executive order before Congress gave him a law. Mm-hmm. He gave the Native Americans an executive order before Congress gave him a law. Mm-hmm. You, you follow what I'm saying? Donald Trump yeah. gave the Hispanics, the Latinos, an executive order before it. You understand? Uh, Obama could have used the power of his pen. And here's my one thing against Barack Obama. Mm-hmm. My one thing. You're right. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to slight him for not changing anything. Mm-hmm. I'm going to slight him for not even trying. Do you see the difference? Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. You the president, a student. That's true. 100% agree with that. He could have at least tried. At least we would have seen, like, damn, he really couldn't do it. They really hated on him at every step of the way, but when he didn't try, like, what can you say besides he didn't do it and have white people laughing at you? What he did for you? They even they they'll say shit like that. Tell me that college. You didn't get nothing done. But guess what, brother? I salute you. Cause I saw you fight for me. Mm-hmm. You feel me? You didn't get nothing done. But I saw you fight for me. Mm-hmm. Every time I turn on the television, Barack Obama talking about homosexuals. Like they the only people in the country. That's all he talked about. Middle class white people, homosexuals. Women and immigrants. That's all they cared about. Black people got no attention from him. But that's why the white man put him in there. When Obama was running for office, I'm one of the only scholars of public stature that said when he's done, we're going to be worse off than we was before he got in there. You go to my old, I did a lecture. <laughs> he said he's the only scholar of public stature to say Obama wasn't going to be what we thought he was going to be. Like, right, come on. Black and Nova Bookstore, Philadelphia. This on YouTube. Go watch it. Mm-hmm. People still watch it now. They say, Dr. Obama, everything you said in the Obama, and this is why he was running. Everything you said about him, it has all come to pass. Why? I'm not no genius, but what I... Any black man was sense would have knew that Obama wouldn't go do much for black people. Like, he's still in a, right, a white-ran society. And for him to even get to the position that he is to become the president and not just to run, but actually get elected. Like, what did you expect from him? He's going to take care of white people. Like, it ain't like we was competing down there 45 to 55 percent and we just coming up and then, bam, we got one in there. Now it's our time to run stuff. No. I can see a Hispanic president doing a lot for Hispanic people because they got that. They coming in, showing their hand, like, we pushing in, we want our way. We ain't just sitting back hoping we get a bill passed because y'all feel sorry for us. We we ain't just hoping that we could just get up next to y'all and just fit in with y'all and conform to y'all way of life. Nah, it's a difference, man. And we didn't we don't move like that, so what did you expect from him but what you got? Well, is every time we get elected officials, the condition of black people gets worse. It never gets better. Rarely do we do better when somebody black gets elected. You don't think he was personally uh, hand selected, especially after the oh, the sure Bush was. situation. Yeah. yeah, they selected Barack Obama to make America, to make the black community in America safe for homosexuality, and they needed him internationally with that Africa support because America needs Africa's resources. Mm-hmm. But he was a stooge in a puppet. He knows it, but he did it willingly. You know, I'm sure he has trouble sleeping at night sometimes. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But my point again, if he has no power. And if you claim your vote, see, both things can't be true. Either your vote is important, mm-hmm. or Obama should have never been elected because he ain't got the power to do nothing. You see that? You can't have a vote. You can't say, my vote means everything to me, mm-hmm. but I'm going to use it on a man who can't do anything for me. Mm-hmm. It can't. My vote means everything to me, and I could use it on a man who could really do nothing for me law-wise, but... It, it's actually a good look, the fact that he was the black president. It's, it's a good look. I would rather my kids see that and other kids see that, like I said once before, just knowing that they have the potential to be that type of person in life, not just always ran by white people, a black man seeming to run things. People look at a president, they see his power and see him running things. So the optics was great for that, despite what he did. like He couldn't do much. It is what it is.
both ways. I'm going to be honest with you. And I don't blame Barack Obama. To his credit, he never said he would do that for black people. Do you understand me? Face value. When Jesse Jackson ran for president, 84, 88, he said he would do something for black people. When Al Sharpton ran, he said he would do something for black people. When Barack Obama ran, he made sure he didn't mention black people. Even in his presidential address, he wouldn't even mention Dr. King uh, by name. He just said a, a preacher from uh, Georgia. He wouldn't even say his name. Obama stayed as far away from black <laughs> issues as possible. So to his credit, he didn't lie to us. We projected onto him mm. this messianic complex that spelled us. Because guess what? You know what? Do you think Joe Biden would have ignored black people if we didn't let Obama do it for eight years? Do you think Donald Trump would have ignored black people if we didn't let Obama do it for four years, mm. for eight years? You will never get another president's attention anymore. Because the whole world watched black America catch hell and give Barack Obama a pass for eight years. So, it didn't take the election of Barack Obama and him not doing nothing for black people to let other white presidents know that they don't have to do nothing for black people. If it's in their heart to help black people, they was going to do that regardless of what Obama did or not. Trump got in there and said, met with the uh, the black HBCUs, the black colleges and stuff like that. And people ostracized the HBCU leaders and and poked fun at Trump and like, come on, man. So you want us to stay out of the game with them, but you also want them to help us. Like, it's not going to happen. You're not going to get your own sovereign part of America that just, you can stay in and then reap the benefits off of being in America while trying to be separate from America. Like, come on, man. Like, stop. Get over it, man. And if you really hate America that much, why not go to another country that'll solve all your problems? Why not? And if you feel that strongly about black people and saying that I don't want to leave because my people here will tell every black person who want to go, we are going to this particular country the same way Jim Jones did, <laughs> the fucking cult leader. We going here, we going there, we're going to start our own colony. We need doctors, we need scientists, dentists, all the professionals that we could get and let's do this thing on our own and get your own land and do it somewhere else but they don't want that they just want to poke fun at white people and suck money out the black people who want to hear this type of rhetoric and just to the day they die and somebody else come out and do it and somebody else come out and do it like it's just it's an endless cycle of getting nothing accomplished first thing we could have ever done was publicly say it was okay how do we bring it to not do nothing and just be black Good shit. That's the end of that one.